especially if you are hyper fixated on calories or being hyper fixated on calories, especially if that gets in your way, this is going to be something that I think is going to be a really powerful tool for you. Um, it has its cons. It has its drawbacks for sure. And that's kind of what this video is about is talking you through this principle and then just allowing you to navigate it in a way that is going to actually help you to, uh, be successful with it. But then there's also some, some tips that are really going to be helpful. So I'm going to use this whiteboard here and then we'll just go through these one by one. Let's start with the pros and the cons. So first the pros, um, it is very flexible. And so, uh, this method is eating until 80% full. That's it. Um, and it has an actual fancy name that I forget, um, what it is called. I'll put it in the description, but, um, it's eating until 80% full. So the reason this is so flexible is like, you can eat anything you want. You know, you really can't eat pizza. You really can't eat cookies. You really can't eat cake. There's nuances to why that isn't going to be helpful for you in the long run. Um, but I mean, you can eat those things and still lose weight. A lot of people think if, you know, if you eat unhealthy, you can't lose weight. And it's really just how much of that stuff that you, that you eat. Now, the problem with high calorie dense foods, such as pizza is a lot more calories come in being 80% full, but still, this is a very flexible way of dieting. And, you know, it allows you just to be immensely available to whatever you want to eat. It also allows you again, to not hyper fixate on the actual calories, but you're trying to pay attention to your body's internal cues. So it can be something that is very helpful. Um, the second, uh, pro is that it is easy to remember. I mean, eat until 80% full, no matter what you can have anything on your plate you want, as long as you're eating till 80% full, you don't have to remember what has carbs in it, what doesn't, what has sugar in it, what doesn't, whatever. Um, it is just extremely easy to remember. And that is, that's really important. If you get caught off guard at a party or Super Bowl or whatever, um, it can be easy to just ditch your diet because it's hard to make it fit that place that you're at or that situation that you're in. But with eating until 80% full, you literally, wherever you're eating, you're just eating until you're 80% full. Now, exactly what is 80%, you know, that's, that's up for grabs. Um, and would be something that I don't, I can't even define that for you. Um, that's just something that you're gonna have to be aware of as you're eating. Where am I? 80% full. Um, but no matter what, again, no matter what you're eating, no matter where you're eating, no matter what situation you're caught in, uh, it's pretty easy to remember how to follow this diet. So the cons of this is it takes lots of practice. And I was kind of talking about that just a second ago. Um, but it takes a lot of practice to know what 80% full is. So it's your first week might not be as successful as you otherwise might, might want it to be, but just remember it's your first week. You know, same thing with your second week and your third week, but you're going to start getting a lot better at this two, three months in. Um, now, this is not, I'm just going to tell you right now, this is not my favorite method of trying to diet. Um, but especially at the start, this is, you know, maybe a way of you getting into just realizing how much you're eating and controlling your portions. The practice that it takes is, you know, again, going to be a while and it's, it's going to, it's going to be hard to get used to it first, but I don't want that to be discouraging. It should be encouraging that you are, I promise you are miles ahead of where you once were whenever you weren't eating mindfully and trying to be 80% full. Whenever you're trying to be 120% full, you are going to probably get results just by simply keeping track of your portions a little better and being aware of whenever you are done. Um, but again, takes a lot of practice. The next part is there can be a lot of guilt associated with it. Um, and the reason there can be a lot of guilt associated with it is because, you know, even though we're probably eating a lot less and you are miles ahead, it's hard to kick that guilt out of your mind. I've been there. I have faced that many times um, where it's hard to get that guilt to leave your mind whenever you are eating pizza or whenever you're eating cookies or whatever. Now, let me um, clarify. I'm not saying eat whatever you want, just do 80% full. Ideally, you would still eat mostly healthy foods. That's lean proteins. That's fruits and vegetables and uh, whole, whole grain carbs, um, low fat dairy, things like that the power of this is its flexibility. And so when you are being flexible and you are eating things that maybe aren't necessarily, um, you know, within what we might consider a healthy diet, it's hard to get rid of that guilt. And that guilt does, I'm sure you've felt it. I have felt it plenty of times. It does tend to trip us up. Uh, we tend to miss a workout because we feel guilty. And then that missed workout makes us feel more guilty. And then eventually we're not eating to 80% full. We're eating to 150% full because we're binging. And um, I've been there plenty of times. And if you have been there as well, I feel your pain. So, um, that is definitely a downfall of this, but I think it can be overcome. 
Um, and then the last part is that there's no structure. So that's kind of like the opposite of, or, or sorry, the opposite of a pro being the con is it's very flexible. Um, so very flexible as a pro and no structure or being flexible is also the con. Um, whenever it's that flexible, it's hard to, um, decisions aren't made for you. You're constantly having to think about, um, you know, what is 80% full? Um, especially whenever you're out, let's say you're out with friends or whatever, especially if you're drinking, good luck drinking. It's hard to mix that with this because you're already in an impaired state that it's hard to decide what 80% full is. But without that structure, whenever you're out to eat or at a birthday dinner or whatever, um, it's hard to, to remember exactly where to stop. Uh, cause you're, you're having to be mindful so much. So Perhaps something such as, and it's, I'm not saying I'm necessarily a fan of these diets, but kicking out all carbs or whatever might be better um, for some people because it's easy just to decide, hey, I can just eat this. I don't have to be mindful about it as long as whenever I ordered, I didn't order any carbs. So, um, you know, it's just something to consider. So let's talk about a couple things here. I'm going to just uh, do both of these in one. Um, why you'll succeed and why you'll fail. So these are going to kind of go with the... Um, Pros and cons. So why you will succeed on this eating until 80% full is there's not a whole lot of hyper obsession with calories. So if you trip up on that, it will be something that will be very freeing to you to just focus on, Hey, I'm just going to eat until I feel satisfied. Um, and not a hundred percent satisfied either. And I think that's the the trick because whenever we're a hundred percent fat being eating till a hundred percent satisfied is, you know, kind of what got us where we where we want to change anyway, being able to just release the, the process of, of hyper-focusing on, on, um, calories, macros, or a specific diet is something that, you know, will help you succeed. And you can always take this with you. You're never going to be caught. Let's say you're at a, I don't know, a ball game or something and you order a hot dog and you're like, Oh my gosh, this doesn't fit my diet because I said I wasn't going to have any processed foods. And now here I am with this hot dog and I made this mistake. You can always still eat that hot dog. You just eat until you're 80% full. It might be the whole hot dog. Um, it might be most of the hot dog. It takes a lot of discipline to decide that you're only going to eat, you know, three fourths of a hot dog. Um, and so that might lean on the why you'll fail side of things. But for now on the why you'll succeed side of things, it is, um, very different um, in terms, you know, a typical diet where you are stuck in a certain way of doing things and you're stuck on certain calories. Um, and so that is a, a huge plus in this category. So why you'll fail. Um, I think the lack of a plan is very difficult to overcome. I think whenever we feel like we're just kind of free falling and doing the best we can, it just tends to not work for my clients. Um, now, maybe whenever you've lost all the weight and you've really built up all these habits and you're, you're really aware of portion sizes and stuff, um, this could be something that a person could live with forever. Now, I food log still to this day. Um, I just love knowing kind of like a, like a money budget. I love knowing the money coming in and the money going out. I have exactly, you know, I don't, I don't have to worry about anything in terms of, for me, that is very freeing. And you could get to that point. You could start with 80% full. And then as you make a little bit of progress, you switch to something like food logging or macro tracking or whatever, you switch to something else. And then you switch back to eating till 80% full because you have mastered the habits that help eight, eating to 80% full be something that is actually still beneficial for you. So for instance, um, you know, you might start learning some recipes, some of your go-to recipes, or you might pick up on the fact that smart pop popcorn, um, fills you up with very minimal calories because there's no oil on the popcorn they add to it. Um, that's Orville Redenbacher's, I think is what that is. Um, and whenever you've learned these little tips and tricks and you know how much peanut butter is two servings and all that stuff, then you could switch back to it. And now, you know, okay, it's shockingly a small amount of peanut butter that leads to, um, the 190 calories that are usually on a jar or whatever. So, um, it could be something that at the two ends of a diet or two ends of a fat loss transformation, if you will, the beginning and the end could be really, really helpful for you. Um, so let's get into some, um, tips, uh, that I think are really going to help if you follow this and it could be, again, don't let me saying that there are major downsides deter you from starting this. I promise if you have never, if, if you struggled with diets, you're probably watching this if you've struggled with diets. So if you have struggled with diets in the past, um, don't, don't make me accidentally tell you that this is far inferior. It has inferior qualities to it, but it could be a huge boost for you. So, um, let's get into some things that are really going to help you. So first is going to be low calorie dense foods. I brought that up a little bit 
or I just, you know, briefly mentioned it whenever I was talking there. I have an awesome free resource for you that is called the 30 day shape up challenge. It's 30 days of four habits that I run my clients through that is going to help you get a great start to your fat loss journey. And there's a bonus fifth habit in case you fall off the wagon at all. All my clients love it and it's free. So just scan this QR code here or click the link in the description and I'll send that straight to your email. So things like lean protein, that's chicken, that's extremely lean, um, uh, turkey, ground turkey. Uh, we have 97% lean around here, but some people only have access in 93 or 90. But, um, you know, anything lean protein is really going to help pork as well. Sometimes, um, you know, pork chops, um, things like that. Um, uh, not really pork steaks or pork butt that has too much fat in it, but lean proteins are going to be your best friend. Anything that you see, um, you know, this could include protein bars and stuff. You just have to be careful with them, but anything that, you, you know, a recipe or a food that has a lot of protein and the majority of calories are coming from protein. It's just going to be a very filling food, but it's not just protein. Obviously it's, um, fruits and vegetables. Certain fruits are going to be a lot, um, more, uh, lo lower on the calorie density side of things. You're going to be better off probably with strawberries. Um, and almost any berries, they're going to be higher in fiber, um, and lower in calorie for how much you can eat. I know that watermelon and strawberries are just like, you can eat a bowl of watermelon for like 150 calories. It's insane. Maybe it's a pound. Um, I'm not sure how much it's a lot of watermelon. Um, same thing for strawberries. I'm pretty sure their volume is the same in terms of weight. Um, for 150, 100 calories, you can eat like an entire bowl. And so that's going to be hard to overeat on that. You know, imagine pairing that with, let's say, just say strawberries, you pair strawberries with um, some plain Greek yogurt, which is higher in protein, and you, uh, you know, season or flavor, I guess, that plain Greek yogurt with cinnamon and um, vanilla extract and some stevia. Uh, you now have this like high protein dip that tastes, you know, pretty good. I'm not saying it's the world's greatest thing or anything, but it tastes pretty good. And you dip those strawberries in it, you're going to be getting a high protein, very filling snack. Um, and so things like that are really going to be helpful for you. Some other uh, low calorie dense foods anything, you know, salad. And I know that like salad is a typical like dieters thing. And it's almost like this anti, like we don't do salad on a diet thing now, but I love salads. I mean, a lot of people that I talk to, a lot of my clients, they love just giant salads. Um, they take up a lot of space and it's nice. It takes a long time to eat them. Um, obviously spinach, um, peppers, onions, things like that are going to take up a lot of space and not have hardly any calories compared to the volume. Um, you, put some chicken breast on that that you seasoned up well and some maybe zero sugar, uh, uh, you know, they have those, I can't remember the brand right now, but, um, the, there's a pretty relatively famous brand in stores of zero sugar or low sugar, um, sauces. I know one of my favorites is the, the low sugar honey mustard it still has some fat in it. So it has that creaminess, but, um, you know, it's, it's a, a really good, uh, salad. You add an egg to it, or maybe you could even make egg whites because that would lower the fat even more. Um, and you have this egg, chicken, veggie salad. That's a really good example of low calorie dense foods. But then you could also get into like recipes. Like you could take a lasagna and a lasagna recipe. And instead of ricotta cheese, you do fat free um, cottage cheese. Jeez. Um, you could do uh, fat free cottage cheese. You could um, add just far less cheese to the recipe and do a lower. A lot of the, this is a, side tip. A lot of the sauces in store, um, look, start looking at the labels are not all the same. Uh, sorry, tomato sauces. Um, so like pasta sauce, some of them have 45 calories per serving. Others have 70 or 80 calories per serving. I'm not sure what kind of fat or cheese or whatever they're adding in there, but, um, start looking at those sauces and pick the lower calorie sauces. Um, for the same volume, you're getting a lot less calories, sometimes half. So you do, you know, you make tweaks. You take each, how I kind of look at a recipe is every ingredient on the list. I just, is that the lowest calorie or a lower calorie option? Um, you could take one layer of the lasagna noodles and you could switch them out for zucchini noodles. Um, you know, it's just a single layer. You don't have to have a hundred percent zucchini noodle, uh, lasagna. You could, um, let's take another example, a power bowl or something. Instead of, you know, one cup of rice, you could do half a cup of cauliflower rice, half a cup of regular rice. That'd make it a lot less noticeable. If you're like, I love cauliflower rice, then remove all the rice and do a cup of cauliflower rice. Um, the closer you can get to low calorie dense foods, the more full you're going to be. Now imagine combining that. Here's the real power of this. Imagine combining that with eating until 80% full. If you're eating a salad and you eat until 80% full, the salad was already for this giant salad. It was already only, you know, I'm making this up, but you know, 300 calories, but you only eat half of it. 
you know, your lunch was 150 calories, you might have the problem of you're not eating enough. We need to get you eating more in order to not lose weight so fast, which I know you're like, please don't stop me from losing weight fast, but that's a conversation for a different day, but you don't want to cut into your muscle. So we might, you know, if I was coaching a client, I might have you eating more. Um, and what a good problem that would be is eating until 80% full. Hey, in fact, you got to eat until 95% full because you have such good low calorie dense options. So that is a um, huge uh, tip and combined with these other ones is going to really, really help you. So um, next I'm going to talk about eating slower or eating slow. Um, and I know it's kind of cliche, but, you know, eating with chopsticks or, uh, you know, just literally making sure to chew your food more. I wouldn't recommend counting your chews. I've heard of that before. That is, that would drive me mad. Um, but you know, eating with chopsticks or just eating with a smaller spoon, literally getting a half serving so that you have to get up and go get more. If you want more things like that are going to slow you down. Um, and then, you know what, I'll combine this with it. Um, water, water is obviously going to slow you down. Having water in the middle of your meal as well, making sure that every two bites or something, you take a drink of water that still might be kind of maddening to keep track of, but eating slower and consuming water during the meal is really going to help you. Um, of course it's hard to eat to 80% full if you scarf something down and you're 90% full or you're 120% full before you even realize it. Uh, so if you combine that with low calorie dense foods, you're eating, you're drinking water, or, you know, it doesn't have to, it could be flavored water too. It could be a diet soda. That's fine. Um, so you're, you're drinking something that doesn't have any calories. It's going to fill up your stomach as well. You're eating slowly. So you realize whenever you're 80% full and you're eating low calorie dense full, or, sorry, low calorie dense foods so that your calories are literally like far lower whenever you're 80% full. This is a, a, just a recipe that comes together, pun not intended, a recipe that comes together for success, which is why if, if you have stuck around this long, my earlier talking about this as if it was kind of like, man, it might not be so good, but it might be good. Um, I still, you know, lean on that side that I think there's better ways, but at first, or, you know, whenever a person has successfully completed their journey and now they're just trying to maintain, this could be a powerful way of putting this together. Now it does take a little bit of, um, you know, just constant awareness and constant planning with my food logging with how much I food log. I don't really, I mean, yes, I have to plan, I guess, you know, just plan in a different way. But this just requires constant awareness of what is 80% full. Um, maybe eventually you wouldn't have to. I've never seen a person take it this far, but um, perhaps a person can get good enough at this that they wouldn't have to eat until 80% full. They just kind of naturally do that. Um, you know, perhaps that is one of the genetic benefits of someone who is just naturally leaner, naturally skinny, if you will, is they just don't have much of an appetite anyway past 80% full or 90% full or at least 100% full. Um, so, uh, those low calorie dense foods, eating slowly in water is really going to help. And the last one, and I think this is key, I am not against snacking, but on this particular method, no snacks. Um, I'm not saying zero snacks. I mean, man, if you're hungry, go ahead and have a little bar or something. Have a, have a, a some low calorie dense food, such as strawberries and plain Greek yogurt. But in general, if you can eliminate the snacks and keep your three meals a day, as maybe a fourth meal a day, maybe you have, you know, breakfast and then a, um, early lunch, if you will, and then a late lunch and then dinner. Um, ideally it'd be breakfast, lunch, dinner, those three meals with these tips, low calorie dense food, eating slow, consuming a lot of water. It's going to be hard to over consume on your calories. If you only have three opportunities per day to, you know, eat more than 80%. Um, if you're a little bit wrong and you eat until 95%, it's not that big of a deal whenever the rest of your day isn't risking you eating 120% full, you know, so eliminating those snacks is something that's going to be really helpful. Um, and this overall is going to be a diet that is, again, re relatively easy to follow, easy to remember at least, um, and is very flexible. And if you take those tips, it's going to be something that is definitely going to get you in the right direction something I want to encourage you with is you can always grow. You can, you're don't feel like if you're not moving as fast as you would like to, that you're failing. I know it's kind of cliche, but one step forward is one step closer to where you want to be. And there's nothing wrong with moving slowly. So let's say you do this for three months and you lose five pounds. I'm not saying I want you to lose five pounds in three months. I would love you to lose more weight, but isn't that a world better than 
being the same weight or even have, having gained weight. Um, and then at the three month mark, you can decide, you know what, I think now that I've really been aware of my food and I've been exercising, getting in better shape and all that stuff. And that's a, get, you know, other videos, but now that I'm in this better position, I can try to start looking at some of Aaron's other videos on food logging or macro tracking or whatever, um, or pre-made meals. I know there's lots of services out there for that. They're crazy expensive, but, um, if you can afford it, good for you. Um, so that is a, a massive win. If you have come this far, even with eating until 80% full, even if it's barely any progress, I'm telling you the skills and the knowledge that you have now is going to set you up for success with whatever you try to do first. So I, or whatever you try to do next. So I would definitely recommend if you are, if you have been frustrated by diets in the past or you're hyper obsessed with calories, whenever you start tracking calories, start with this 80% thing. I think it could really help 